welcome back welcome back to minimum discount broccoli and again we're gonna be dating some pokemon from the later generations welcome to part two of dating pokemon from generations five to eight this time that is you know what to gallo and although the roster was a little shorter this time i did find a lot more pokemon to love and a lot more to hate on so this video might just be a little longer than the previous one a lot of you also asked me why there were no legendary Pokemon and this video isn't going to have any of them too because since Game Freak gives these Pokemon some extra care I will be doing so too with a special separate video for those so keep an eye out for that. Anyway without any further ado let's get into rating the Pokemon. I decided to mix things up a little this time so I will first give you the ones I don't like as much and then we'll move on to the ones that are nice. So let's start with you know what. Unova introduced us with an entirely fresh dex because I guess everything was starting to get old and repetitive. So there were a few cool designs but if you're gonna hate on something, it's them trying to imitate that Magneton. Who thought that imitating magnets with gears was a good idea? I mean, well, it's pretty lazy first of all and Kling Clang does it worse. Kling Clang is just a ring around Clang, first thing. Second, that name is just the Evolution 1 plus Evolution 2. Even at least the name of Magnezone and the concept was pretty creative, but in case of Kling Clang, it just went downhill with every evolution. So Kling Clang gets a straight 2 on 10 from me. It doesn't look bad, but it's super lazy and there's nothing to like about it. So my other least favorite right here is gonna be Gerda. We did not want a clown for a fighting type. It does not even look like a fighting type. Second, its hairstyle just makes it worse. That hairstyle is as clowny as it gets, but it also looks like the grey matters of your brain are exposed right out. Timber looks cool because it kind of looks determined and Conkelder has uh, pretty big concrete blocks. Plus, it kind of still looks like a dude, but Gerder looks straight up like an amoeba who became a clown. So um, not like the other fighting types of Unova were very good looking but Gerder especially is terrible so it gets only 3 on 10 from me. Moving on to the ones I'd like. I'm not going to be uh, waiting for uh, building some hype here. I'll start with the 10 on 10 that is Zoroark. My favorite along all the generations and the entire roster of Pokemon is Zoroark. It's such a genius design. Who would have thought of making the ponytail the literal tail of the Pokemon? Also that color black and red never gets old, always looks classy, uh, especially when it has such a sleek design. I also love how they've given it the perfect snarky personality and it's a fox. You cannot not love the fox. Anyway, moving on to the other cool ones, although not 10 on 10s, I give Gigalith an 8 on 10. As a rock type, I feel like most of Pokemon's designs are just putting eyes on rocks, but I think Gigalith does this a little better because the eyes don't look like they're out of place, they don't look like they've possessed a rock, but rather they look like a part of it. So the design looks much more continuous than any previous rock types. I also love how it looks like this crystal piece of rock, an unpolished rock with crystal chunks still in it, and of course, we gotta love the shiny of Gigalith. So, uh, Gigalith gets an 8 on 10. The other 8 on 10 here is going to be Cofagrigus. Cofagrigus is a genius design in concept. I love how the, the ghost has possessed the coffin itself. And the coffin looks pretty intimidating and, and nefarious. So, it looks nasty enough to be a ghost type. And of course, the color combination and color choice for Cofagrigus was pretty cool too. So, that's another 8 on 10. Moving on to Kalos. I'm a huge fan of French art and the same goes for French food but sometimes they might not be as good as you think they are and with that let's start with the terrible French food Pokemon Slowpuff. Slowpuff gets a straight up 3 on 10 from me. Okay, I do not like the idea of mixing dog with food. I mean some countries do but I don't really belong to them and I don't think it's an exciting experiment. So Slowpuff is not my idea of something appetizing or friendly and it also has an unsettling look plus that tail looks extremely goofy and I do not enjoy its design overall. Moving on to the 4 on 10, Diggersby. Okay, it looks nasty, it's got some personality but the lower body just throws me off. Uh, I don't know what it was supposed to be wearing a rubber ducky float or what but it just looks pretty weird and uh, disproportionate to the upper body of it. It kind of reminds you of that rude guy who's sitting in the corner of a pub who shouts at the 
bartenders and wait- waiters and burps loud just so that people notice him and kind of want him out of the pub but he doesn't leave anyway moving on to the better designs in Kalos we have Noiwon okay Noiwon is a genius design of a bat and a wyvern mixed together with the concept of noise um, those ears of Noiwon are so cool i love how they they kind of look like sound catchers i also love the colors that went into Noiwon's choice it looks dark typeish it also looks like a dragon and of course the name was also a very good choice and it's also a clean design so can't help but love Noiwon Anyway, moving on to my other 8 on 10 from this region, that's going to be Pancham. And Pancham gets uh, its 8 because of its personality. Although Pangoro looks much more bulky and the guy who'd beat you up, Pancham looks like a determined uh, little boy who's ready to go to his dojo for training. And he's got better personality, admittedly, because his eyes are more expressive. Yeah, I also love the idea of having the twig in the mouth and making a panda a fighting type. Now, gotta love that choice of... Uh, concept. Next we go on to the 9 on 10 from Kalos that is Aegislash. Okay, there may be personal reasons involved here like how Aegislash gives me some Zelda nostalgia of those phantoms and ghosts but it's also a very well thought out inanimate object becoming a ghost type Pokemon. I love how uh, the belly of the Aegislash that is its shield can also become the little shield. I love its two forms. It also looks intimidating enough and it's a little sword, but it still looks alive enough, and that's what you want from your ghost knight. You look dead and alive at the same time. So Aegislash gets a straight up 9 on 10 from me. Now that we're done with Kalos, let's move on to Alola. Okay, well, let's say I have a lot more to hate here than to love. So let's not fail to disappoint ourselves. First, we have Dartrix. Dartrix gets a 3 on 10 from me because, first of all, it looks irritating. If I didn't like a Pokemon for its personality, it's gonna be Dartrix. Uh, and also those eyes, they went lazy on it clearly. They could have given any eyes except that. And that hairstyle reminds me of that one kid who would always interject and give the nerdy pedantic answer when you just wanted a casual conversation with them. Next we come to Persian. I don't know how they messed this up so bad. Normal Persian looks pretty cool, although Meowth looks better, but alone in Persian on the other hand, it looks so discontinuous and disproportionate. The face does not look like it belongs to the body. The color choice was good, but why did they make that face oval? It looks like something I'd make in two seconds using that oval shape in MS Paint. It does not look elegant either, and that's, I think, what it's supposed to represent. So I don't know where they were going with this design, but I give it a 3 on 10. Next, let's get to Clabominable. It gets a 3 on 10 from me. Those teeth throw you off guard. And probably that's what the Pokemon's meant to do since it's a fighting type, but that hairstyle doesn't get worse. Also, the color choice, uh, well, I wouldn't choose those colors. And the hands, the literal hands on its paws make it look like a plushie. It's a chaotic design and not in the right way. They were trying to be unique with it, but unique doesn't always work. Last but the literal least is going to be Ductrio. Well, we've already talked about Ductrio enough in my Kanto. Um, criticism, but Ductio just got a little more hair on it now. Well, what do you know? The hair makes it skill type. That's nice. Let's just give it a 2 on 10. Although it has 3 faces, I don't think the hair is helping it here anymore. It looks just as plain as it did in Kanto and it just looks and it's just more stupid to think that its hair added skill type to it. So it's a downright da- downgrade from the original Ductio design and hence a 2 on 10. Next, let's move on to my favorites from this region. I give Lycan Rock an 8 on 10. Oh, who would have thought of making the werewolf a rock type? But they did it well. I love all the forms of Lycan Rock, but the Midnight form always, uh, obviously seems the best. I also love its cry and the name. It looks evilish too, and that's about it. I have been waiting for a werewolf Pokemon for quite long, so that's why I love Lycan Rock. Next, we move on to my 9 on 10 from this region, and it's Tox Effects. I guess a lot of you may not agree with me here, but Tox Effects looks very cool. I love the colors they put into it. I think they've been getting better with their poison time, uh, types over time. Uh, and Tox Effects is the perfect representation of that. Its colors are very well chosen. It looks cute and vulnerable on the inside. And then it has those the spiky or baneful bunker on the outside to attract its uh, predators who end up being the prey. So uh, Tox Effects is a very cool creature in representing um, 
you know those trapping Pokemon I also love how its uh, tentacles make a house like structure and they also make its arms so it's a pretty genius continuous design and therefore a 9 on 10 from my side finally let's move on to Galar okay Galar had a lot to love and a few to hate now let's just say it made quite a, a few good choices when it came to design at least so let's move on to the ones I didn't like first we go on to Indeedee what is that name again Indeedee that's uh, that's the laziest name they could have come up with and that's it I'm going to be saying about that and I still don't understand what Indeedee is is it a cat with a horn and why is it a replacement for Blissey when it looks it doesn't look like it has anything to do with breeding so why does it replace Blissey in the Pokemon Center I wonder also why is it a psychic type nothing about Indeedee sits right with me so it gets a 3 on 10 I mean I guess it looks like any standard Pokemon that I definitely run away every time I see in a wild battle it it's just not up to the standards of Pokemon at this point my other rate my other least favorite in Gallard is Mr. Mime which gets a 2 on 10 from me Mr. Mime looks not so nice even to begin with in its original design but it gets a, a super downgrade when it comes to Gallard uh, Mr. Mime is a clear 2 on 10 because well the face looks just as goofy there's no, not much of a change from the original except the pose and uh, I mean the pose just got much more terrible now and they changed the, uh, the ears to horns I guess or they made them longer or god knows what they did but why did it become an ice type it, it just doesn't look right enough for me and uh, although I mean I guess Miss, you'd be asking why Mr. Rhyme doesn't come here because Mr. Rhyme at least looks like Charlie Chaplin or that's what it's supposed to represent but Mr. Mime changing forms didn't make sense to me maybe they should have stuck with the original Mr. Mime and only created a regional variant evolution for it uh, now let's move on to the ones I did like from the region and there were quite a few of them uh, starting with Obstagoon um, it's quite rare for them to go for an evolution of a Pokemon that you'd meet on the route one of every game and they did that for Zigzagoon so I'm glad they did its, rep its colors are fantastic black and white uh, gotta love the monochrome uh, and also I love how it clearly represents the rock band it has all the personality it needs for it has red eyes and it's a standing version of L Linoon so well Obstagoon is a rare a gem and it's a good one at that gets a straight 8 on 10 from me moving on to my next 8 on 10 here that's going to be Toxtricity um, Toxtricity is a Pokemon that everyone likes and although I don't generally like agreeing to the overrated designs Toxtricity is not overrated it's famous for a good reason I love the colors that went on it I love both the forms and in fact I love the color palette of the low key form more than the high key so uh, but uh, so I guess my opinion still differ from yours but Toxtricity still looks cool overall I love the entire music theme that a lot of Pokemon from Gala went for and as the guitarist, I also love how they've, um, you know, paid attention to the number of strings on its body in its two forms. So, yup, gotta give Toxtricity its color um, rating of 8 on 10. I also love the uh, type choice they went for with Tox uh, Toxtricity, that is Electric and Poison. It's a rare type and although it's not very cool competitively, it's kind of nice to imagine a Pokemon of that concept. Next, we move on to Sinistee. Not the evolution, but Sinistee, because who would have thought of a Briton without T? And Japan didn't either, Game Freak didn't either with uh, Sinistee, but they made a ghost out of the teapot. Now that's something I'd call creative. I love the color palette that went again with Sinistee. I just guess I love purple and uh, that color of blue a lot, but also Sinistee gets an 8 on 10, not only for this, but the fact that they introduced a very subtle design element to the bottom of it and that determines whether I mean that came from the entire lore of a lot of false tea sets and uh, crafts being um, sold in that time uh, in Britain so there's a lot to love about this little guy and therefore it's an 8 on 10 finally we get to my 9 on 10 from Galler that is Berserker if a lowland Persian was a bad design execution of Meowth's evolution Berserker was the perfect one Making a Viking Meowth is such a cool idea and giving it the steel type where its beard is spiky enough to pierce through you. Its beard looks much more steel type than Duck Pure's hair would mind you. And of course, um, 
it has that arrogant personality of it it looks like a warrior although it's that tiny and i love how it looks powerful and rough it looks like it's right out of the seas therefore berserker gets a 9 on 10 for me so that ends my list from the last few generations of pokemon and with that we're done rating every pokemon region from 1 to 8 in two videos if you haven't seen the previous one make sure to watch that right after this and i hope you guys enjoyed let me know in the comments about how much you disagree and how your favorite pokemon is in wasn't in my list anyway see you guys soon with more new videos let me know if you want um videos like this more often thank you guys for watching stay tuned